Ultimate Chicken Horse was one of our go-to games when we used to have friends over in college. Many nights were spent crowded around my boyfriend's computer hollering about item placement and saboteurs. I remember it being amazing, but I don't think our neighbors were having quite as much fun as we were. Listen, we got a report about noise. What the hell's going on in here? We're just rehearsing. Sounded like you were pounding the hell out of the ceiling. That's them, officer. Playing with a full group of four is probably the most chaotic way to play, but we still have a great time when it's just the two of us. Having some newly minted platforming skills, I couldn't wait to get into it again. Maybe I should have picked an easier opponent than my boyfriend, though. But who else would I play with? That's just the way things work on an Ultimate Chicken Horse kind of date night. <laughs> When we play, I feel like Ultimate Chicken Horse instills the mentality of if I can't win, no one can. What the hell? Conversely, when I'm playing, it becomes something more along the lines of if I can win, everyone can, which actually means no one can. No! What was the plan there? To skirt the spiky. Why wouldn't the you point. just go for the win? Shit! If you haven't played the game before, at the start of each round, you get to pick objects out of a box and design an obstacle course together. You get to choose between all sorts of platforms and traps. But when you're starting out, you usually want to focus on actually making a way to get from start to finish. Unless you're my boyfriend, I guess. I can't tell you how often that box opens up, and the first thing he grabs is some kind of hazard or trap. Sometimes the first three rounds go by without either of us making it to the finish because I'm the only one designing a bridge to get across while he's over there placing flamethrowers and wrecking balls all over the place. What the hell am I looking at? I must utter the phrase, why would you place that there, over a hundred times on Chicken Horse Date Night. I don't know what kind of maniac would rather jump across a bunch of loaded crossbows instead of a simple wooden beam, but I guess I'm stuck with one. Hilariously, most of the time he dies, it's usually to something he put down in the first place. Oh my god. <laughs> I think I put that there too. I can hold my own pretty well for the most part. <laughs> but around the time things start spinning, I lose my footing. Whenever we pull out a honey block that rotates, you better believe he's slapping that thing right next to the saw blade or the wrecking ball. Is it too much to ask to just let me ride my little paper airplane to victory in peace for once? Taking stuff out of the party box is a major source of contention for our relationship. He pulls out all the stops and uses the slimiest tactics when we play. For one thing, he'll see me hovering over something and grab it before I even realize what just happened. <gasps> oh. <laughs> And if it's not that, then he'll famously pick up a bomb and patiently wait for me to place my object only to explode it immediately afterwards. What are you doing? What are you doing? I don't know where to put this yet. Does not destroy something? Yeah. I knew you were gonna do that! <laughs> How'd you know? Because <laughs> I'm dating you. <laughs> One of my favorite things in the box is the little one by one stone covered in spikes. A classic girl from Maneuver is to watch him extra carefully each round to figure out the path he likes taking through the chaos. Then I place the stone right where he likes landing so he doesn't see it coming until it's too late. Many of my victories can be credited to the strat, but really the stone does all the work. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero and I'll accept that responsibility. With all the random stuff getting pulled from the box, things can get a little claustrophobic. We either end up making things so damn difficult that it's impossible to make it through the hazards, or so much of a mess that we can just jump over the top of everything and avoid taking any risks. That's the point where I'm usually just praying for a nuke to show up, that way one of us can blow the whole operation wide open and shake things up a little bit. We need a nuke. There's way too much stuff going on. Yeah, and who put it there? Oh, thank God. No, I missed the black hole. Oh my god. The game encourages you to be quick. And I'm not just talking about finishing the stage first. My whole life is spent trying to keep up with him, and Chicken Horse is no exception. He's always the first one to pick an item or collect a coin, and I always get left in the dust. Still, rushing is the biggest hazard of them all, and even though there isn't a tortoise to play with, I'll stick to slow and steady winning the race. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was really trying. A big problem I run into when playing this game with him is how scoring points works. Basically what'll happen is if no one wins the round, then no one gets any points. Makes sense. But if everyone wins, then it's considered too easy and no one scores either. Damn, nice shot. So what ends up happening is any time I manage to make it across the finish line, there's about a 90% chance he's gonna be sitting there waiting for me. So round after round, we end up playing a zero point game. Why is it too easy? Cause I got there too? Everybody gets there, it's considered too easy. What? So basically, 
I just have to get fucked. A small caveat to this is coins. When a round is deemed too easy, the coins you manage to carry to the finish line are still counted. It's not unusual for us to win solely using coins alone for points. While they're a good source of getting points, they also happen to be my secret weapon. You see, he is so greedy that I know he won't pass up the opportunity to snatch a coin from me. So whenever there's one in the box, I try to put it in one of the most absurd locations imaginable. Like four out of five times he'll get himself killed going for it, and I get to enjoy a nice casual walk to the goalposts. There's a handicap setting that allows us to scale how many points each player needs to win, but we've been down that road, and it's a losing battle. At first glance, it seems like a pretty sweet deal, but it just starts feeling demoralizing when he pulls out a win requiring twice as much work as the rest of us. He is the undisputed platforming king in our family, and making him beat me twice as many times isn't gonna change that. <laughs> Majority rules when picking a stage to play. Back in the day, I remember being a little intimidated by the fact that you had to do some platforming just to get up to the different stage choices. Nowadays, it's not such a big deal, but I'm still haunted by the memories of not being able to vote for a level because I couldn't wall jump my way up to it fast enough. It doesn't help that he loves to remind me of my blunches in the past. I told you that in confidence. That was a con- his favorite thing to do is to jump up to one of the higher stages in the treehouse and wait for me. Then as soon as I make it up to him, he'll jump to another one. He really likes pushing his luck, but he better watch out for when I start shooting him my squinty eyes. If I didn't know any better, I think that was all he wanted in the first place. When we sit down to play, it's always a battle for the title of Ultimate Horse or Ultimate Sheep. Those are the characters we always used to pick back in the day, and some things will just never change. I always play as the horse, obviously, and I've developed a bit of an irrational hatred for that smug, woolly son of a bitch. It's thanks to all the times he's taunted me with that little dance he does after I get fleeced. Nothing hurts more than seeing my horse's limp body after bumping his head on a propeller, and then immediately panning over to that sheep doing the monkey like Johnny Bravo. One, two, three, yeah. The game always starts out feeling relatively normal, but the longer we play, the more hysterical things get. Sometimes the most fun we'll have is just dying right at the beginning and then watching one of our ragdoll corpses. Nothing gets me going like seeing his sheep slumped over and tossed around by all the ridiculous shit the two of us have placed. I think the only reason we stop playing is because we start laughing too hard to do anything seriously anymore. Oh, shit. <laughs> Probably the best feeling I can get from this game are those rare occasions when he dies and I get to be the only one who makes it to the end. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And all three of the coins, too. All the pain and suffering is worth it for just a small taste of victory over him at the thing he's good at. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Woo! Oh my god. Can I say your girlfriend can platform? If you ask me, that's the whole reason I stomach the losses over and over again. That way I can savor those little moments as much as possible. I love rubbing his face in it. Ow!